Hello folks, welcome back. This is Kweku. I'm a pharmacist. This channel is dedicated to healthcare information as well as pharmacy stuff. So feel free to hit the subscribe button if this is something that you find interesting or useful. Today I'll be reviewing the medication azithromycin. We'll take a brief look at what it is. We'll take a look at some of the common uses and doses as well as some best practices or precautions. We will obviously talk about some side effects as well. Before we go any further though, I just want to mention that this video or this review is for informational purposes only and please do not use it as a substitute for medical advice from your physician. So what is azithromycin? Well, it belongs to a class of medications or antibiotics called macrolides. Other common examples in this class include erythromycin and clarithromycin. The advantage that azithromycin has over the other members in the class is that it has a broader spectrum of activity. In, in other words, it kills more bacteria than some of the other members of the class. It also has a relatively long life or it has a relatively longer duration of action and therefore it is able to be dosed once a day relative to the other ones where typically you would take uh, twice a day or even sometimes three times a day. It also tends to possess lesser gastrointestinal side effects relative to the other members of the group. It is available in a tablet form, uh, in a powder for suspension. It's available as eye drops, as well as intravenous um, administration, for intravenous administration. Now let's go to some of the uses. And this list is obviously not exhaustive because it can be put to so many uses depending on um, what your individual circumstances are, what your history is, what you're allergic to, and stuff like that. But generally, it can be used for acute otitis media, which is basically ear infections, bacterial sinusitis, sinus infections, bacterial conjectivitis, what we normally refer to as pink eye. It can also be used in community-acquired pneumonia, as well as some uncomplicated skin infections. It has also been used uh, for strep infections, streptococcal infections, infective exacerbation of COPD. So sometimes people have COPD and they develop some kind of infection. Azithromycin is one of the go-to medications for that. It also finds use in a host of sexually transmitted diseases. Notable among them are gonorrhea, chancroid, and chlamydia. With respect to dosing, it really depends on what kind of infection is being treated. Pediatric doses are typically based on weight. With that said, the most common dose that you're probably going to see in the pharmacy is either 500 milligrams taken daily for three days. This is what we refer to as the tri-pack. Or you may see instances where you take 500 milligrams on day one and then 250 milligrams on days two to five. This is one of the most common ones and we refer to as the Z-pack. There is some unique dosing though when it comes to treatment of STDs. Typically you see, for example, in gonorrhea, either they may be given one gram as a single dose or two grams as a single dose. So if you're taking the 500 milligram tablets, you may take either two as a single dose or four of them as a single dose. This is quite normal when it comes to treatment of sexually transmitted diseases. Azithromycin is largely considered to be safe. However, there are certain people in the population that need to pay a little bit of extra attention when they take azithromycin. The first of such group of such people is people who have abnormal heart rhythms. There is a tendency for azithromycin to what we, to cause what we call an elongation of the QT interval, which basically means an ab abnormal heart rhythm, which can be serious. Extra caution should therefore be used in such people, especially if they also take medications that can affect heart rhythm. Such medications include uh, medications like sotalol, amiodarone, and quinidine. Another group of people that should be a little bit cautious when they take azithromycin is elderly patients. This is because the risk of heart rhythm abnormalities is relatively higher in such people, and therefore they definitely need to be careful. It doesn't mean that older people cannot take azithromycin. They can, they definitely can, and they do take it. However, they just need to be a little bit more cautious and observe and see when things are not right and report to your provider or your doctor. People also with liver disease or hepatic disease should also be cautious when they take azithromycin or other medications in that class. There have been reports of hepatitis, cholestatic jaundice, abnormal liver function, and even some fatalities. This is because azithromycin is mainly eliminated by the liver. 
So if you already have a liver that is not function, uh, functioning optimally, you risk a situation where you have higher doses than normal staying in your body for relatively longer periods of time. So people with pre-existing liver disease should definitely be cautious when they take azithromycin. Now some general best practices. As with all antibiotics, azithromycin should be taken for the whole duration for which it was prescribed. You generally don't want to discontinue taking it just because you feel better or because things look okay. Otherwise, this leads to the development of resistance of whatever infection that you're being treated for. This, I believe, shouldn't be too difficult for the most part just because azithromycin is typically taken for a relatively short period of time, usually three to five days. Also, do well to separate azithromycin and aluminum or magnesium containing antacids by about two hours. This is because such antacids may render azithromycin relatively ineffective. Azithromycin may be taken without regard to food. That means they may be taken with or without food. However, from experience, I noticed that it helps mitigate some of the gastrointestinal side effects that may occur. So if you can, I would recommend that you take it with a little bit of food in the stomach. Also, azithromycin must be stored at room temperature. It does not need to be refrigerated, especially the, the suspension. I say this particularly because of the suspension. I've noticed a general tendency for parents to keep antibiotic suspensions in the fridge. However, azithromycin is not one of those, so it has to be kept at room temperature. We'll now switch our attention to some side effects. Side effects of azithromycin are primarily gastrointestinal. There have been reports of diarrhea or loose tools occurring in about 4 to 14% of adults and about 1.8% to 10% of pediatric patients. Nausea has been reported as well as vomiting and abdominal pain. Abdominal pain occurring in about 1.9% to 14% of adults and 1.2% to 4% of pediatric patients. Flatulence is also relatively common and it occurs in up to 5% of adults and 1% of pediatric patients. Other side effects include headache, which occurs in up to about 5%, increased liver enzymes, about 1% to 6%, abnormal vision in about 5% of the people, and some fungal infections, vaginitis, up to about 2.8% of the population, and fungal dermatitis, occurring in less than 1% of the population. Now, these fungal infections are not necessarily unique to azithromycin. What happens is that generally for most antibiotics, as you take them, they destroy or they kill both the good and the bad bacteria. So it gives a chance for other fungus that or fungi that under normal circumstances would have been kept in check to proliferate and lead into fungal infections. So typically you will see that um, some, especially for some women that have dispensed medication to, their doctor will prescribe an antifungal to be taken either before or immediately after taking the antibiotic therapy. I want to mention that azithromycin is considered very safe, safe enough to be given to infants, and uh, pretty much almost everybody, unless you're allergic to it, can take azithromycin. So the side effects shouldn't you know, be something that puts you off if you are prescribed it. It's definitely a good medication. I've dispensed it tons of times. I also did another review on a different antibiotic, amoxicillin. I encourage you to watch it. I'll put a card and link it in the description as well. Thank you so much, as always, for watching and see you on the next one.